Hello everybody, my name is John Norris, I'm the Head of Content here at Rocket Mill. Um, and today I wanted to walk you through some, some real content marketing basics. So I've called my talk today Content Marketing 101. Not a lot of people know this, but when you go to content marketing school, there are three, it's a real school, uh, there are three key areas, three key texts that you have to study. These are distribution, inspiration and messaging. These are the texts that I'm going to be referencing during this lecture if you want to go back and study them a little more fully for yourself. So let's get right to it. Number one, distribution. One of our, the key, key tenets of, of content marketing. You can't win in content marketing if you don't know how to distribute your content. Um, so I will begin with one of the best distributions of all time. Can anybody name this film? Armageddon. There you go, Armageddon, obviously. Um, and can anybody name the title song from this film? There you go. It's I Don't Want to Miss a Thing by Aerosmith. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, and uh, that is our first key text that we have to study at Content Marketing School. Uh, Steven Tyler, 1998. <laughs> um, you may not know, but this was actually Aerosmith's first number one single um, in the US. It sold over a million copies in the UK and the US. And it was actually Oscar nominated. If, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, and it still hangs around today. I've heard this song many times in the last few months. I'm sure probably many of you have as well. And you might be puzzled as to its longevity because it's not really that good a song. Um, oh. 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 <laughs> so, um, so, so it, it's worth studying uh, Aerosmith's method of, method of distribution here to, to kind of unpick what they've done and learn from it. Um, if you think about the primary way that you receive songs, they're usually bundled up in playlists. Some example playlists might be karaoke favorites, classic rock, Movie soundtracks, power ballads, love songs, 90s hits. Where does I Don't Want to Miss a Thing sit in this Venn diagram? It's right in the middle. <laughs> they have absolutely nailed the distribution of this song. If you probably 75% of all playlists out there, if you go far enough down, this song will be in them. And that is why it is so persistent, because they have absolutely mastered the distribution method for this song. Whether they did that intentionally or not, I have no idea. Nonetheless, they have done it, and that is why it is one of our sacred texts of content marketing. If you understand the distribution methods of your content, if you understand how your users share and consume content, you're going to be set up for long-term success. Moving on, inspiration. Who can name this bass line? <laughs> Scott nailed it, Under Pressure by <clears throat> Queen and David Bowie. Uh, you may also recognise it from a song by this gentleman, uh, Vanilla Ice. And that song, Not Under Pressure, is our second key text of content marketing. Mr. Robert Michael Van Winkle, 1990. One million copies sold in the US, the first hip-hop song to top the US charts. Also the song that almost made Eminem give up his rap career, um, because he was so saddened and ashamed by it. Also Grammy nominated. Uh, he did, did quite well, Mr. Van Winkle, which is Vanilla Rice's real name, in case you weren't following that. Um, so what can we learn from this song? I think this is one of the core tenets of the web and content marketing as a whole, which is everything we do is built on borrowed ideas. There's very, very few things that happen on the web that are entirely new or innovative or massive step forwards. Um, so it, this, is, you know, this is how software development work works. Uh, things are built on top of projects that people have done before. This is how scientific research works. Um, work, research is published. It's then built upon in further research. There is absolutely nothing wrong with this approach. Um, and I'll give you a really great example of how this is kind of panned out in the content marketing world. Has any, anybody know what this is? It was a, a real uh, watershed moment in online publishing. This was a story called Snowfall published by the New York Times in 2012. And it was really the first interactive, immersive storytelling type piece that was ever published. If you just kind of watch it go there, you'll get a feel for what I mean. This, remember, this is in 2012. This was six years ago. This cost them hundreds of thousands of dollars to make. They won a Pulitzer Prize. They won a Peabody Award for producing this. You know, it, it weaves together text with video, with pop-ups, with really nice presentation. It's done in chapters. It's a really formidable piece of online content. This was one of those moments of great innovation. It was a huge step forward and everybody kind of recognized it at the time. But obviously then what happened after that is that everybody wanted a piece. So before long we had Snowball, a WordPress plugin, which let you make kind of the same thing. We had uh, the Aesop Story Engine, which is an open source platform which lets you build those kind of parallax scroll interactive type elements. We also had this platform called Shorthand, which is a slightly more enterprise approach, which lets larger publishers uh, create these sorts of things at a larger scale. And worth noting that the Telegraph went absolutely mental 
and published a similar story about Tunnock's tea cakes. Um, so I've no idea what they were thinking there, but they obviously thought we need to get a piece of this, and that was the subject that they logically went to. The thing to remember here is that progress is always incremental. Good ideas are always built on top of other good ideas. There is one uh, slight caveat with that, which is that you must remember that Vanilla Ice was sued by Queen and David Bowie, and he did lose, and it cost him quite a lot of money. So if you are leaning on, yep, there he is. If you are leaning on the ideas of others, it's important to get their permission, or at least credit them. So now on to our third lesson, messaging. We've nailed the distribution, we've nailed the presentation. What about what actually goes on the page? What about the words? Important core principle of content marketing, um, and, and indeed marketing as a whole, the more simply you can explain your product or service, the more likely people are to buy it. People want snappy slogans, they want emotion, they want something that they can really get behind. Um, a, a, a teacher of mine, not at content marketing school, as you may have guessed, that's not a real school, um, but at, at a university, uh, once told me that nobody will ever complain if you explain something to them too simply. And that's kind of something that stuck with me. Um, I think it's a really good kind of value uh, to keep. When we're keeping things simple, uh, there's a couple of basic rules that we follow uh, for copywriting, but also for, for more general marketing work. Keep it short. Don't say them more than you have to. Use language that customers understand. Don't make your customers do any work. Use words that they know, use concepts that will be familiar to them. Give examples, put things in context for them. Help them understand what it means in the real world. And last but not least, make it idiot proof. Make sure that anybody can buy what you're selling. So I'm gonna give you one example of incredibly successful messaging and, and use of these kind of tenets. Um, so I'll start with a quick question. What do you call a man who doesn't have a car but walks instead? Lives at home with his mum? Has a shorty but doesn't show love? Wants to get with me with no money. Scrub. A scrub. And that is our third key text. <laughs> Lopez et al, 1999. The seminal hip hop song of 1999, if you ask me, it had the most radio airplay of any song in 1999. It won Grammys, it won MTV Awards, Billboard Awards, NAACP, pretty much everything going. Written, of course, by Chili, T Boz, and RIP, Lisa Left Eye. Now, TLC wrote the book on messaging and copywriting. Um, so I'm just going to uh, review this fantastic work quickly to show you how they did that. A scrub is a guy that thinks he's fly. What they've done there in the very first line of the song is offered us a definition of a scrub. <laughs> Bear in mind, when the song was released, <laughs> the concept of a scrub was not in the public realm. Nobody knew what they were talking about. So they had to establish this concept really, really quickly. And is also known as a buster. What they've done there is they've offered us a synonym <laughs> for, a, for a scrub. They're speaking our language. You may not know what a scrub is, but you certainly know what a buster is. Always talking about what he wants and just sits on his broke ass. So now what they're doing is they're giving us an example. They're giving us some tips on how to recognize a scrub in real life if we come across one. They're putting it in context for us. Now what they do is really clever. They make it idiot proof. If you're still not sure at this point what a scrub is, they're going to give you a checklist. If you don't have a car and you're walking, if you live at home with your mama, if you have a shorty but you don't show love, you want to get with me, my Oma, with no money, if you can't spatially expand my horizons, if you don't have the G's to please me and bounce me here to the coast of overseas, and of course, if you're hanging out the passenger side of your best friend's car trying to holler at me. If you fulfill any of those criteria, <laughs> you, sir, are a scrub. <laughs> there is no way that you can finish this song without knowing what a scrub is. In three and a half tight minutes, TLC have taken a completely unknown concept and they have launched it into the public lexicon. They have given us examples, synonyms, usage, and very clear yes-no conditions as to what constitutes scrub-like behavior. So it is absolutely no wonder that this word and this term and this concept has endured to this very day. And this is a level of clarity that I think all of us should aspire to. So, in sum, uh, if you want to get into the world of content marketing or if you just want to study it a little more, please see our three key texts. Distribution by Aerosmith, inspiration from Mr. Vanilla Ice, and of course, messaging from TLC. Thank you. <laughs>